The Canon EOS R6 has always been the smaller brother of the R5 and at least here in Central Europe I had the impression that it was never as popular amongst wildlife photographers as the R5. I think mainly because of the megapixel but there are some other minor differences. But this all could change now since Canon introduced the Canon R6 Mark II, the successor of the R6, a couple of days ago and it shows a lot of promising features, um, some of which that are even better than the R3, the top tier at the moment from Canon. So in this video I just want to share a bit my thoughts on this camera based on the specs that we already know and my experiences in wildlife photography, but obviously I don't have one of the cameras in hand, we need to wait a bit more until they are starting to get sold. <laughs> Let's start with the sensor because I feel this is the reason that most people chose the R5 over the R6. Mainly because you have more megapixel on the R5 to crop a bit in, in case you're not close enough to the animal. And while I completely get this point, I also want to stress that the R6 sensor is not bad at all, especially at higher ISO, it at some point outperforms the R5. And now with the R6 Mark II we get a small bump in megapixel from 20 to 24. So not huge, but I think welcome and it's a new sensor and it's not the stacked sensor from the R3 as some rumors were suggesting before which unfortunately means that rolling shutter is not completely eliminated but Canon promises that the readout is faster and I need to say on my R5 I shoot uh, in the electronic shutter 99% of the time probably and I rarely have issues with rolling shutter. The R6 was a bit slower in readout but now if it's faster maybe the R6 Mark II can even top the R5 so we will see the need to see for the first test but honestly I don't think this is a major drawback and also if we look at other manufacturers at this pr price point there is just no full frame camera that has a stacked sensor. But since we talk about speed this camera can still shoot 12 frames per second mechanical where obviously you don't have any problems with rolling shutter and with the electronic shutter it now can shoot up to 40 frames per second so that's twice as fast as the original R6 and it's even faster than the R3 at least in the normal mode the R3 shoots up to 30 frames per second. What I find even cooler is that you now have a pre-burst so like with the R7 you can now um, as soon as you start to hold down the shutter it starts pre-recording the pictures just keeps them in the buffer for half a second and then once you press the shutter button down completely it starts writing them on the card plus this half a second you had before. Um, this only works with 30 frames per second which is still plenty fast I would argue and this means that you would have the pictures you normally take and then 15 frames before you actually release the shutter and I think this is really great if you have a bird on a perch on a rock wherever and you expect it to take off but you don't know will it happen in the next two seconds or in the next two minutes and yeah I think this is an amazing feature. I can't wait to see it coming in more Canon cameras and of course also other brands. Um, one thing I don't like is that still all of the pictures are in, in a big container as a single file that can get several hundred megabyte large and then you need to extract it either with um, DPP with the software of Canon or in camera but to my knowledge Lightroom and Capture One can still not handle these file formats. So I kind of wish there was an option in the camera menu to choose between this big container format, maybe for better overview, and having them written as single files on the camera. If we go back to the normal shooting mode where you have up to 40 frames per second, um, my first concern there was how big is the buffer actually. And it's 75 pictures, which first sounds not too bad, then if you think about it, it's not even two seconds of continuous shooting, so not that great. Um, but I have some thoughts about it. Remember that it's not an R3 or an A1 or a Z9. You pay substantially less. You pay less than half of it. So of course there will be some drawbacks. And I also think it's still better than with the R7 because 40 frames per second is a lot. And personally I would not use this as my standard. I think I would dial the standard down to 20 frames per second, which is possible now with the electronic shutter you have the option of 5, 20 or 40 frames per second, unlike for example with the R5 where you just have, well, single shot or 20 frames per second, there is nothing in between. 
And then if you shoot with 20 frames per second, you can shoot way longer than this um, two and a half sec uh, two seconds. You can probably shoot five seconds, but this needs to be tested. Next thing is that I tend to shoot in zero and in zero the buffer is also bigger. Even if you shoot with 40 frames per second, you get more than 100 pictures. So you get, uh, I don't know, around two and a half to three seconds of shooting. And this is really quite good. The fastest frame rate is not really useful if the AF cannot keep up with it. But luckily the autofocus of the R6 was already very good and top of its class. I think only outperformed by the R3, at least in the Canon system. And here they improved it more. It has more deep learning, more, um, yeah, more feature detection. So it can also uh, detect now horses, including zebras, which when I think back about my traveling to Africa, this is actually where the R5 and also the R3 actually, for the moment I tested it, was struggling a bit. So with birds, it's doing way better. With mammals, it has a bit more trouble. So I think some improvements here are definitely welcome, even though it was mostly not a big issue because most of the time it was still detecting the face, sometimes just the ear, sometimes if the animal was a bit farther away, the whole body. But if the animal is kind of far away, yeah, I mean, the, the depth of field is not that shallow. So if you go on the neck or the head, sometimes doesn't matter, but sometimes, so any improvement here is welcome. How much better it will be, we will see, but I'm not too concerned here. Then the next thing is the video features. And here, I just want to touch it briefly. So it can do 4K 60 frames per second without a crop. It's downsampled 6K, so we should have a really good sharpness. Um, if you use an external monitor, like a Ninja or something, you can actually record the 6K video, which I think is pretty cool, even though I will not need it. And more interestingly, maybe there is a new switch to switch between um, photo and video mode, which means you now can also have your custom settings for video. And um, this is something I didn't like with the R6 and also one of the main reasons I got an R5 as a second body. Some other things, the viewfinder still seems to be more or less the same. At least it has the same resolution, the same magnification. Um, so blackout free shooting will not be a thing, unfortunately. I was not really expecting this, but I think this is something that can sometimes improve the keeper rate for me more than having an additional 10 frames per second, especially if the subject, your bird is not flying like constantly, but a bit erratically. Um, but I still think it's, it's okay, it's not too bad. Um, on the viewfinder, you now have this um, optical viewfinder simulation that we know from the R7 and I also think from the R3, but the R5 and R6 did not have it. And I really like to use this with the R7 if I shoot backlit, for example. And I just wish, please, Canon, bring this as a firmware upgrade to the old R6 and to the R5. Otherwise, many things stay the same. The processor is a bit optimized, so this could potentially help with image quality. But what we already know is it's producing less heat. So this means not so much overheating with video, which is great. I'm not sure if for long exposures, like of uh, star trails or something, this could also help with the image quality if the camera and potentially the sensor is not getting too hot. But finally, um, the battery will last way longer. So uh, if you use the screen, Canon claims up to 50%. I'm always skeptical with this, but I think any improvement in battery life is welcome. So what are fi my final remarks? I'm really excited about this camera. Honestly, half a year ago, I would not have expected it arrives so early. Um, I think it's a very solid upgrade from the R6, but still, if you already have an R6, I would think twice if I would pay again around two and a half K for this camera. Um, if you're starting now in the, let's say you still have a 5D Mark IV or so, this is a great camera, I think, to upgrade. Also, if you shoot with a Canon EOS R, I mean, the autofocus, the frame rate, and so many things will be so much better. Um, if I need to choose now between this camera and an R5, I feel like I would still go to the R5 also because I like the, the viewfinder, the bigger one is, or the bigger, the higher resolution one is really a bit nicer if you see them side by side. Um, I like that the, how you change the modes on the R5, it feels a bit more customizable and then mainly for some video features like the 4K 120 frames per second. And I also need to say sometimes I'm happier to crop a bit, even though I feel like Canon is starting to close this gap because, yeah, I always said I don't need 45 megapixels. I would be fine with something in the 30s. So it's really nice that 
the R6 got a small push here. I don't know if this is going to happen, but if I can get hands on an R6 Mark II, I will definitely give it a good test and make a new video on this channel about how it feels in the real life. So in case this should be possible, please subscribe to the channel and see you next time. Bye.